Hey everybody, Rob Childs here, and again, thanks to all you Patreon supporters for all the support that you've been providing. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a question that I have gotten pretty much everywhere that I've ever gone and held a seminar, and that is talking about the open off hand, or when I'm holding my dagger, the way that I wave my hand about. Now, I've been accused of everything from casting spells to, you know, just crazy stuff. Yes, and yes, it's all done in jest. So what I'm gonna do is talk about for you in this video exactly where that comes from and why I do it. All right, so let's talk about the history of where this came from. So you guys have probably seen this yourselves. I know I have seen this a lot, but whenever I have seen people fencing with single sword and, they, and they're supposedly, purportedly, actually using their offhand as a part of their defense, what I actually end up seeing is just the offhand sitting there while the sword does whatever it's going to do. And this thing, almost like it was frozen in space, is just sitting there, not moving, not doing anything, and attacks are going straight past it, not a problem, they're not even thinking about their offhand. The key thing about having both a sword and an offhand, or a sword and your buckler, or a sword and baton, whatever is in that other off, in that offhand of yours, they need to be working in concert with each other. It does absolutely, it does you no good if they're not working together in order to form a whole defense. Now, when it comes to my offhand, when I first got into rapier, I had noticed that tendency in myself as well. I came from an Olympic fencing background, and in that, you don't use your offhand at all. It is all done strictly with what's done in your primary weapon hand. But when I transitioned into rapier so many decades ago, I found myself, like so many of my opponents, just kind of sitting there with the offhand not really engaged in the defense. So as a means to remind myself and to keep that active, to keep it alive, if you will, was to start moving it about. Now what this did was it reminded me at all times that this is here and I found it was much easier to engage that in my defense when I had this moving. It was constant state of motion. It wasn't meant to do anything more than that. It was just a reminder to me to use that hand whenever it was that I needed to defend myself, or when I moved my sword into one position, my hand had a place to be, etc., etc. But then a funny thing happened. I started noticing that this was a, a means of communication. I had noticed that when I would uh, slow down the pulsations of my hand, for example, that I could impart to my opponent, and mind you, you have to have a really good opponent who is connected to the fight in order for this to actually work. But I noticed that I was starting to be able to change the tempo and the reaction times of my opponents by slowing down the pulsations of my hand. If I wanted them to be on a hair's trigger, I would increase the pulsations and I would get them wired. And so if I did that thing, off went their dagger, or off with their sword, it was just on a hair's trigger. I could speed up my opponent's reactions or I could slow them down based upon what I was showing them with the offhand. Of course, yes, there is also the distraction factor that comes into play as well. I did notice that as I'm doing things like this, I could see my opponent's eyes and they would shift their eyes back and forth, watching me, watching the hand, watching me, watching the hand. Well, of course, when do you want to attack your opponent? When they're watching the hand. So movement has a tendency to attract the eye. It just naturally does that. And then of course, there was the flip side of that. My opponent who, thinks that I'm doing this for the purposes of actually getting them to look at my hand, would then say to themselves over and over again, they would be repeating it in their heads of, you know, I'm not gonna look at it, I'm not gonna look at it. Now, as soon as you start, you know, deliberately ignoring something, you are also hamstringing yourself in that way as well. So these are just a number of the fringe benefits that I noticed completely by accident. Now, I will tell you that I also will use that whenever I have a dagger in my hand. So. When I'm in my stance, you will notice that when I'm fighting, you'll see my dagger doing this because of the exact same reason as the open hand. I can use this as a means both to remind myself to keep it alive, keep it active in the fight, but I can also use it as a medium for communication to impart slowing my opponent down, or I can impart like I am very much on a wire and I'm just ready to jump on them any moment, so I increase the pulsations and it makes my opponent you know, just that much more eager to move that sword whenever they see the slightest movement on my, on my behalf. So I will tell you that it is a very effective means by which that you can use it in a number of ways. You can use it to keep yourself, uh, to remind yourself to keep it active. You can use it to communicate with your opponent and you can use it as a distraction. Again, I will tell you, this isn't, gonna, this isn't something that works on every single opponent out there. In fact, 
The less experienced your opponent is, the less likely this is actually going to work on them because you have to have an opponent who is truly connected to the fight. It is a mistake that they make, and it is one that over time they will certainly learn to avoid making in the future, but the more connected your opponent is to the fight, and trust me, you'll get to the point when you can see this for yourself. The more connected they are to the fight, the more susceptible they are to this communication.